Okay, people, positive Paul. And I want to try to get back to my story that was abruptly cut off. And believe it or not, coincidentally, they were buzzing around. And I went out there. And after this upload, if this gets up there, I'm going to do another video breakdown concerning this UFO footage, the American Nazi, Edomite Jew, Reptoid Perplane, these alien insectoids that most of you think is a joke. And I'm doing these videos because I believe a few concerned, very thoughtful, caring human beings are following me. I started the YouTube upload, I don't know, it was probably around uh, maybe 10.30, 11 a.m. It's 6.30, Thursday still, August 11, 2022. And it's the summer of 2019, I believe in, in, in August. I get on a bus down here in Rosarito Beach, Mexico. It's like these small buses they call calafias. They maybe fit 20 people max. And they're, they, you know, they only cost 20 pesos and they, they get you. You'd be shocked. They take you far distances uh, to get you around. And, you know, the, we're moving down the main street. People are getting on the bus, it fills up. There's one empty seat left, and that's, of course, next to me. You know, on the bus, there are all the Mexican people. They're, they're laughing, talking to each other. The one thing about the Mexican people is they have accepted their lot in life, and they make the best of it. They will, you know, doesn't matter how poor you are, how miserable, they can still laugh. They will you know, they, they've got a way of communicating with each other. And, you know, it, it makes me, when I, when I hear, hear and see these interactions, knowing that they're completely clueless, clueless to what really is, is taking place concerning these so-called white people, I, 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 I often wonder is like, you know, what, what will it take? But with that being said, we approach another bus stop, and there is a very large gentleman, tall. He, I'm six foot. Once we got up to the bus stop, I, he, you know, he looked like he was around six five, six six, possibly well over two fifty. He's in long pants and a buttoned up corduroy brown jacket. And mind you, remember, it's, it's, it's the middle of the summer, it's hot. He gets on the bus. I'm about maybe three back, so he, he immediately sees the seat open next to me. But at the moment he stepped onto the bus, I looked at him, he looked at me, and I didn't think this at the very moment. It wouldn't be until days later as I reflected upon the interaction that this individual was this person you see right here who's known as Al Bielik, a.k.a. Edward Cameron. This is from May of 1992 when he's sitting down with uh, Terziski. And the reason why I know it's him, because if you look at this expression on his face right now and his hair, they were exactly the same that day. He did not look happy. So what he does is, is he sits down next to me, but he immediately tries to shove me up against the bus, the, you know, interior wall, the bus where the window is. And I immediately in my mind say, hell no. And I begin to push back. 
And if I could have, I would have pushed him off the seat, but I was unable to do that because this individual was very powerful. And what he did was the most bizarre thing because at the moment we were pushing on each other, I heard loud and clear a voice that came out of him, but his lips did not move, and this voice simply stated, Mexico, huh? And I said, oh, I, I, I heard this. I didn't, we didn't speak, but what we, what he did was to brace himself when I was shoving back on him, he immediately put his hand on the seat where there was a pinky ring that was exposed to me. And I can't give you an exact description I'm not going to even attempt to do that because during all this, the only thing in my mind was after the previous, um, well, you know, four years, a lifetime of all these shenanigans with these sad sack Satanists, I knew that this, this individual had something to do with me when I was a child, a teenager. And... Essentially, the shoving match stopped. No words were ch exchanged. I get up to where I'm going in this poor section of Rosarito, and he gets off the bus. And I get off at the bus the same time, but in my mind, I quickly made a decision that if I tried to investigate what this person is up to, there would have been no benefit to it. Because for one, physically, he, um, as I am turning into an Auschwitz, uh, Auschwitz victim, and I'm just laughing because I'm thinking that I am literally, I eat and, you know, it's not a case of doing drugs. These assholes, what they do with these MK Ultra victims, they all try to make them look crazy or like drug addicts, all right? That's their, their one main tool these psychiatrists and these uh, uh, syndicate doctors will do to try to get you, you know, in their system and just chew, to, chew you to little pieces. So I, I quickly assessed the situation that there was no, no benefit in me confronting him because, one, he may have physically been able to overtake me because, you know, literally, if someone looked at me right now, and I hear people uh, over the period of uh, years told me, oh, yeah, fast and this and that. And I'm thinking, if I fasted at all, I, I, I would probably, it would be the end of me. So I walked off. And who knows what, what you know, he was looking, looking like he was lost because now we're in this poor section of town where there's no white people. All right? It's all poor Mexicans that have been living in poverty for decades. Up until about four years ago when these Satanists started flooding money down here in Rosarito Beach, Mexico. So that, that was my quick story. And as I thought about the interaction days later, I said that was Al. There are no two ways around it. Now, there's Al in or, uh, 1992. But here's Al in the year 2000, and he's doing his famous videos where he's with his friend, this guy, Rich Jibros, out in Denver, Colorado. And we know the date to be 2000 because in the beginning of these videos, him and Rich are driving, I uh, guess, down Route 80 or 70 through Denver and they comment on the uh, the new Mile High Stadium being built in Denver 
which uh, they broke ground on that at, and I think uh, in the end of 99 or beginning of 2000. So this is what he looked like in 2000. Let's go back to the 92. 92. 2000. And now here, 2011, where his, his last known talk to anyone was on March 10th. 2011, I'm going to repeat this, his last conversation with anyone was on March 10th, 2011. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention to these past couple videos, I told you a series of events would occur concerning me in 2011. And we're going to discuss some of them right now. Now, remember, these sad sack Satanist Edomite Jews understand Scripture better than any of us. And they're trying to play out prophecy on their own terms. As I've stated... One of the reasons why anybody would be interested in time travel, if they need to change something, it would be to extend their very existence on this particular, well, in this particular dimension, on this particular timeline, and they know that time is running short. So what we do here is we have what we call... Al Belix Dilemma. Now, in 2011, I was beginning to have things occur around me, people around me that I, again, the, the, the one key event was when the guy hung himself in my apartment back on March 4th, 2010. That caused me to really reassess my situation. And moving into 2011, I had met my son's mom, and she became pregnant in I, uh, what would it have been, I guess, June of uh, 2010, because my son was born on Tuesday, March 8th, 2011. So that, that event, my son's birth, was something that none of us planned on. Let's just put it that way. And there might have been some type of divine intervention there. But that occurred and... I was doing my best to create an environment for these two individuals, meaning my girlfriend and my newborn son. But at that time, I think these Satanists knew I was beginning to wake up on what happened to me as a child. Because people were being placed in around me I was having strange interactions back then, but it would still not be until early 2012 when it all, everything, you know, came, came, you know, home to me about MK Ultra, these implants, everything. So in 2011, this is going to be something that may or may not be relevant or germane, but we all know about Harold Camping. Now, if you were out west, specifically in California, and this might have been all over the United States, Harold Camping was known for predicting the second coming and the rapture, which we now know didn't happen. But we do know, it, whether you like Harold Camping or not, this individual spent a lifetime sharing the word of God as maybe he 
as as he was able to to possibly have a divine intervention, the Holy Ghost, um, you know, imparting to him secrets of Scripture, and he again, just like Clarence Larkin, all the others that we look up to. They spent lifetimes trying to understand Scripture. So Clarence, uh, not Clarence, but Harold Camping went out of his way to create these billboards um, up and down California. Are you ready? The date was May 21st, 2011. Now, we moved through... The summer and you know I I wasn't even thinking about anything about Harold Camping too just so you know back then but I saw these billboards and I'm like wow you know you know this guy's saying hey look this this is it everybody get ready so I am you know dealing with my newborn son and I was on unemployment at the time so that was really the last time I was able to collect any type of money. Um, that ended, it would have ended like sometime 2011, my unemployment. And then I had the one job in 2013 into 14 where I got fired. And uh, a couple other things I tried, but I was immediately fired for various reasons. Yeah, I don't go along with the program, but uh, there was sabotage in a couple of those situations because the co-workers, whether or not they just, you know, hey, we all can't get along, you know? I mean, so I'm dealing with this in 2011, and what happens, as I explained this already a couple times, this is the last time concerning my great-grandfather, Paul W.F. Lindner. He fought the Satanist, him and his associates. They tried to prevent the Federal Reserve. It's well documented about this guy on what his thoughts, what he was up to. And you can find this in the New York Times, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, other publications. And the end, end result was is they were able to sideline him and almost drive him crazy. But what would happen is on August 12th, 2011, they get this publication out on Long Island called the West Hempstead um, Journal or something where they do this hit piece on my great-grandfather, Paul W.F. Lindner. Now, the reason why this was done is because, as I stated, at age 47, after being driven crazy, uh, attempts on his life, the whole nine yards, he does the stupidest thing and joins the Ku Klux Klan around, say, 1923 is the earliest these Satanists can document him being a part of anything. So with that being said, I've already gone over this a couple times, um, they reignite or they start a slander campaign on him nearly a hundred years later and they go through this nonsense recently of removing a street sign where a school was that he built, all right, because he owned most of the land with these other families. There's this dynamic right outside of New York City. Once you get out of Queens and get into that area, it was all these German farmers that fled Germany in the 1860s because of what was going on in Europe and Germany. So they, they, they do this. Now, here's, here's the thing that I want to get to, all right? The slander campaign starts on August 12th, 2011. 32 days later, Jose Delgado dies. Now, 32 days later, after Jose Delgado, my great-grandfather's older brother, Carl Henry Lindner, dies on my birthday, October 17th, 1966. Now, guess who passes away the week before Uncle Carl? None other than Al Bielik. 
Now, as I just explained, that last picture of Al looking very elderly, that would have been the last time anybody heard from Al. Because as Don Croft reports on October 2010, that Al is in an assisted living facility in South Florida. And the front desk and mailroom are apparently blocking his friends from meeting him or sending him packages or mail. I'm not going to keep shifting the phone. Hawthorne tried to visit him earlier this year, but was ejected. So we just assumed it's a CIA-owned facility. The place is very close to the beach where a dolphin came to greet Hawthorne while she's pregnant with her younger child, blah, blah, blah. So what we need to understand is by October 2010, Al is having problems. The people that are close to him can no longer uh, get to him. And where this Don Croft, who is a very interesting individual, I will say he, he was an up, upstanding American. And I don't think he was involved with these Satanists. But he spent time with Al in 2000 after Al had done the video with Jibros out in Denver, ah, Lucas. After Al did the video with Jibros in Denver, he he goes back to Atlanta where he was living at, and at some point in 2000, Don Croft sets up a meeting with him, Al, and Don's wife. Now. They spent a lot of time together, and this is well documented by Don Croft. And information that Don Croft, who is no longer with us, mind you, is very germane to all this. So when you start throwing around names, and you begin to discover who the social media frauds are, or who the ones are just parroting what the victims a witness or testify to, you can tell yourself that this guy, Don Croft, was the real deal. And if he wasn't, well, hey, you know, what, what, what can we do? We're all going to face our maker someday. So the point is now, Al, by October 2010, he, he, he's, he's out of commission. So what happens is, we learn that on October 10th, 2011, at age 84, Al Bilic passes away, writes Kenadachi. I received an email today from Rich Jibros that Al Bilic, whose extraordinary memories surrounding the 1943 Philadelphia experiment and the secret projects undertaken at Montauk, Long Island, kept millions of late-night radio listeners enthralled because he was on Coast to Coast with Art back in 94, same as Preston. He died on Monday, October 10th, 2011, at 6.30 a.m. in Guadalajara, Mexico. Al was buried at a local cemetery in Guadalajara. Wow. Guadalajara. Mexico, huh? This is very interesting. How this elderly individual ended up in Guadalajara. He was very ill by October 2010 in a living assisted facility which certainly would have been ran by the CIA, folks. Remember, these hybrids, they run everything now. Get it through thick heads. 
or sell out humans. But the story is that Rich's niece, Dee, had cared for Al in his last years and brought him down to Mexico. Now, we're never going to get to the bottom of this story of why Al Billick shows up in Guadalajara, Mexico. I know the reason why. And I'm not telling. I'll, I'll just say that. Because I've given a lot of you too much information. Meaning, you frauds. Uncle Carl and George Bush's social media goon squads that attack me in the comments section and use my information. Now, we're to assume that this information's correct. But we got a big problem, people, and I've explained this once already. Kenadachi. Now, if you've ever wanted to learn about anything concerning conspiracy theories, you will find yourself over on Kenadachi's website called educate.org, which at this point, I don't even know if it's updated anymore. The information has been around for at least 20 years on all various subjects. But here's the problem. We got one person that knows all about Uncle Carl. And his name is Stu Webb. Stu Webb is supposed to be this big federal whistleblower that got involved with one of Uncle Carl's associates out in Denver. And this all, all will circle back to everything concerning what went on in the 80s with the savings and loan scandal, the, uh, um, the, the John DeCamp, uh, the school thing with Gunderson, all this. Now, Stu Webb gets involved with one of Uncle Carl's associate's daughters, which turns out to be a nightmare to him. Now, Stu Webb... First, he was the Lone Ranger, federal whistleblower, trying to fight these Illuminati characters, but they threw him in jail. They tried to murder him. Now, Stu Webb, in the past 10 years, has been doing the talk social media circuit. Project Camelot, this uh, Ditz, the Draco Ditz, Carrie Cassidy, all that. Remember, it's a spider's web. The satanic sphere of influence is one big spider web. It's a network of these lazy lying lizards. Now, Ken Adachi, we know he's well known. He is a young Canadian uh, reporter, journalist back in the early 70s talking about MKUltra. So we can easily see where he fits in here. But what does Stu Webb tell us? back on January 28th, 2014. I have confirmed that Ken Adachi has been dead for over 24 years. John W. Allman has hijacked Adachi's name and identity. Another troll, Department of Homeland Security stooge, exposed you. Okay, that's a pretty big whopper. Now, I'm going to end this here because I don't want to, you know, make this too long. But I'm going to tell you what these sad sack Satanist Edomite Jews do to hide their victim's identity. And this would have just been me. Now, we all know about these insurance policies, all right? Remember, if you were part of the original MK Ultra. You're on an extermination list. You're not doing videos with bookcases behind you and bank accounts intact. Oh, targeted individual. Yeah. So, here's my social security card. Now, look at the date on the bottom. April 18th, 2011. Now, what these sad sack Satanists do, and this is no accident... 
they, for years, my well, my whole life, I guess, but I picked up on it maybe in my early 30s. My original Social Security card, where the second N should have been, was a O. Now, this is what they do, too, though. This is called an ASVAB. This was back uh, 2008 when I'm trying to find work because I'm broke. These uh, lazy line lizard lawyers sucking me dry of all the money I had while I was trying to fight them in court during my EEO case. But what they do to confuse my identity is, look, this, this army pogue, all right, can't spell my name. But they all do it. L look at the spelling there, okay? Now look, look at these doctors at the VA. Again, look how my name is spelled. <laughs> I, this is just bizarre. So remember the fixer, right? The fixer, Javers, on my disability help form. Look how she spells my name, right? And then she spells it correct right there. So the point is, guess what? I'm out in California in 2011 and I need to renew my driver's license. Well, guess what? Guess what? They wouldn't give me my license because... I had a suspension that was over 20 years old back in New Jersey. And they told me at the DMV in California that I had to go back to New Jersey and take care of this before they could issue, issue me a new driver's license. And what I realized is that I needed my social security card. And when I looked, I understood all these years later, because I never looked at it, that my name was spelt wrong. And that would have been the insurance policy Uncle Carl had on the event of my untimely death. And they would have cashed in their money and handed out, you know, my parents would have got their cut and everybody else. But guess what? Someone upstairs had a different idea. So yeah, look at that. And look how my social security, 1111, all right? Six, six, oh man, it, it, this is just bizarre, folks. So, okay, well, I don't know what to tell you all. Um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up Montauk Madness month soon because I'm getting sick to my stomach. We're gonna go back over the hybrid issue and I'm gonna end it with Swordlow. But I will say again, all these individuals tied to the military industrial satanic complex, these Satanists that are camped out down here in Rosarito Beach, Mexico, buying off all the Mexicans who don't know better. Um, you, you, some of you will see salvation, but it's gonna it's gonna come the hard way because you'll you'll you, you'll get you know come to the realization that wow, I made a bad choice, you know. Especially, it, it's so sad to see these poor Mexicans get roped into the stalking. You should see them. These old ladies now these they they pimp out their daughters, their sons. They're walking around like zombies when I come out of the house just to get their you know their little benefit. But remember, huh, if the cartel was committing a crime right in front of them, they'd run back in their houses and hide under their beds. So hypocritical. That's one of the uh, card-carrying hallmarks of a lazy, lying, lizard Satanist. All right? They are hypocritical. And remember, when you have a community watch that's based off the satanic ritual abuse survivor and you think it's okay because he's white and American... But you hadn't done shit your whole life concerning what's going on in your own country because apparently for the rest of the world, America is the only way you're going to get out of the muck and mire of your uh, misery. Now we got to, you know, we don't like to uh, speak like this, but you know, hey, I only report the rest of you can decide, but when you Satanists are ready to face me down here in Rosarito and you want to stop sending out these poor Mexicans who I have to look, look after and try to care for when they could care less about me, you can't hide from me forever, all right? I am going to find out who you are, where you are, and we're going to have a talk.